anyway, uh, this first part of the class as usual will be the mark, what I'm calling the girls master class, is just a, how to teach Tai Chi. Just a, there you go, there you go. Just to uh, show you a little about my experience of teaching over the years, because many of you are obviously teaching now and many of you will want to teach in, uh, in, a, in the future. So we've been covering a lot of things. This is volume four of it, <coughs> and we're just about up to uh, starting in with teach how to teach the Taiji form now. A lot of little tricks and trade. Most people make the big mistake of just taking the knowledge that they have and then thinking that they can just open a uh, Taiji class and start teaching people. Well, you can't do it. You've got to know how to teach rather than just imparting your knowledge onto someone. You've obviously got to know how to teach as well. Some people are born teachers, in which case they don't, probably don't need it, but uh, for the most of us, we need to... I've just picked it up over the years. You wouldn't believe my first Tai Chi class ever. It was the worst class <laughs> I've ever given in my life. I was so serious. Good morning. This is a very serious class. We must wear the suit. <laughs> so obviously I've changed over the years. Okay, uh, so teaching the form. Most people, you have to remember, when they come to a class, especially, you know, your, your older generation people, they're going to find even just raising their hands and putting them down again very difficult. Although we might find, oh, that, that's nothing. To someone who just comes in off the street, you know, a 65-year-old man or woman, they're going to find it very difficult to raise and lower the hands correctly. So you, you have to be prepared to explain to them why they're doing stuff and what Tai Chi is, as I've explained in the previous volumes, what Tai Chi is, first of all, rather than just they're just coming there for an exercise. It doesn't matter if you lose them as a student, but as long as they know the truth about it, if they want just, you know, a social club, tell them to go to the bloke down the road who, who wears the suit. So you have to be, tell them, first of all, what it's all about. Tell them it's a healing art, it's a fighting art. And then they run out, and if they stay, that's good. <laughs> but you must explain that to them. That's to, to, be, to be truthful to them. The first thing is, you must tell them how to stand, and simply like that, and then like that, as far as they can go, and then like that. It's basically shoulder width on the inside of your chest. It's not shoulder width on the outside of your chest, it's too wide. It's shoulder width down here, so your feet are firmly under your body. So that's how you have to tell them how to stand. They'll even find that a bit difficult, because most people will stand like this. And you say, parallel, and they say, okay. No one ever goes like this, but it's always, they think they're parallel like this. So then you tell them, okay, you've got to really put their feet correct, and they'll think, oh, that uh, feels a bit difficult. Even just standing there like that. You know, some older people will think, gee, this, this is really strange. You, but you, and then you start, you put them in like this, and you say, do the first move. Out goes their foot, you see? So you've got to keep correcting them, and keep correcting them all the time. Most difficult thing for them to, to, to do, and, and a lot of masters teach Tai Chi like this, And most people will do that. You tell them to raise their hand, they'll either go like this, or like this. Some people do do that. Even if you say do this, they'll go, because they th what they're seeing is this, although you're teaching them that. So that's another you've got, thing you've got to be aware of. But what you're showing them is not, ne not necessarily what they're seeing. <laughs> I've seen so many versions of Pang this or this even and sometimes you just have to say yeah that's great that's great and hope that later on it might fall down into the right place you know so the first thing that they're going to find really difficult is releasing the energy all the way up the stroke and then you have to tell them this happens all the way through your whole Taiji form we're not telling them to do the yin and yang hands because that would be just too much in the beginning no one can understand that in the beginning. So the best you can hope is, is that you can, and this will probably take your whole first lesson, just getting them to do this. So you must tell them that you must 
first of all, they won't understand, but tell them the difference between yin and yang, and that's full of yang energy, that's full of yin energy, etc. And that all movement to be internally powerful must be releasing either yin energy or yang energy over the whole stroke of the movement, whatever that movement is. So first of all, you tell them it must be a shoulder rotation rather than this. Because as soon as you tell people to do that, they go like this. I'll bend their elbows up, because that's the easier way to do it. They'll always take the easiest route in Taiji. So you've got to tell them, keep correcting them and say, no, it's a shoulder rotation. You must bring your hand out. And then you say, like, it's like two pieces of string on your, on your wrist, pulling your wrist out from your body. And you say, see how your arm's a little bit bent there, like that? Try and keep it that bent. Don't bend your elbow as you bring your hands up. As soon as they start thinking about that, they'll go, ah, and lose this. So that's why it takes the whole first lesson just to get this first move correct. So that's the first very important point, especially with older people and people who haven't done any Taiji before, is to get this. Even seasoned karate people can't understand this concept of relaxation, leaving the wrist, and even, even once they understand it, of course, then they'll go... like that. There's all this extreme tension in the arm trying to do it, rather than just allowing the wrist to raise, to flop, and then the fingers. Now this is a good idea to tell people when you bring your hands back down, rather than telling them to change the state of the hand, tell them to leave the fingers like as if there's a, something pushing back on the fingers as they bring it down. So the fingers stay there and the wrist drops below the fingers. That's always a good idea to tell them. And then it releases on the way down. That's the most important thing, first of all, to get them releasing. And then you can get them doing it sideways. So you can hold their hand like this and then try and release their wrist over the whole stroke of the move from left to right. And then from right to left, you get them to release it back this way. And you can get them to release it all different ways and try to join these movements up like a figure eight but keep on releasing the energy over the whole stroke rather than going up like that and then down releasing the energy down here and then when it goes the other way like a feather I always tell people it's like a feather with the wind blowing on the other side of it the hands going that way the fingers will always go back that way if the hands going that way the, the wind will blow the tip of the feather slightly back that way over the whole stroke then you get them to do both hands And that's very difficult for newcomers to get that. So if you can get to this point, you know you are a winner. You know that person is going to understand it right from the beginning and they'll be able to pick it up. Some people, all they'll ever get out of Tai Chi will be just some exercise. And that's good anyway because it's better than sitting in front of the television and eating all day long. So at least they're going to get some, some sort of exercise if they practice. 90% of all Tai Chi people, especially when you're starting a, a beginner's class of, of maybe older generation people, they'll only practice when they come to the class. So you, practice, you teach them this, next week you'll have to teach them all over again. Then you might give them another move. In the next class you'll have to start right from the beginning again because they only practice when they come to class. And they don't practice at home. So that's, that's, a, that's a thing to really instill in people. So that's the first thing, getting this, this wrist thing happening. Then of course you've got to tell them to coordinate their breathing. I don't even bother about telling them where to put the tongue or anything because it's too much to think about in the beginning. I just tell them to breathe in and out the nose and everyone will do this. Raise the chest. There's no easy way around that. I always tell people to lie in a bed at night, put their hands here and then try, as they inhale, to push their hands up. And if they go like this, they think, oh, hang on, my hands are going in. So then they, then they finally get the idea of relaxation. But if, you, if they totally relax, then there's only one way to breathe, and that's here. You, if you're totally relaxed when you breathe, you cannot raise your chest, because there's not much, there's only a little bit of lung comes from here, but it sort of thins out and it gets up to about here. That's why acupuncture's got to be very careful sticking 
needles in here because you can puncture the top of the lung. But it's only a very thin middle bit of lung up through here.